Did you talk to your mom? Yeah, but it's all the same. I won't give you a penny, I'll kick you out, I'm done with you. It's because of me, Oscar. Now listen, I'll, uh, I'll find myself a job, I'll study through correspondence, and you and I are gonna get married. <laughs> and I have a much better plan. What plan? So my friend's sister and her family are going to Germany on business, <sighs> and they can take a babysitter with them because they're expensive there. To make a long story short, they liked me. <laughs> <laughs> you know how much they offered me? <laughs> Here. <laughs> that much. Wow. Yes, just a year, maybe even less, and we'll have such a wedding. You and I are gonna have a wedding that we'll remember the rest of our lives. And we won't even need to borrow the money. Yeah. <laughs> Julia, I'll take you. Oh, I... People... Oh, I don't care. Tell me, when would you go? In a week. Hmm... Private Eye Tatiana, Maternal Instinct. Stevenson, that's for you. Don't forget your ultrasounds in an hour. Okay. Oh, and Lacey asked you to come urgently. I met her in the hallway earlier. Don't worry. I'll be here to give pills to the other girls. Don't forget to check the lists, understand? Yes. Stepan Ivanovich. What is it? What a clever, beautiful woman you are taking from us. Hmm. We're losing such an investigator. And I think, my friends, that we'll miss her, yes? Kiss, Kiss her. her! Kiss 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 her! One, two, How did it go? I don't think that anyone noticed anything. Did you bring the passport? dress like that every day. Okay? Thanks, Stefan. I appreciate that. But I'm afraid every day would be too much. Too bad. Because beauty will save the world, as one classic once said. <laughs> By the way, why aren't you and Andrew sitting together? Did you get it to a scrap? I don't understand myself. He's been acting rather strange lately. Mm -hmm. That's because of Tatiana. Chief said he had enough humiliation and indignity. 
And I totally agree with him because I also have some self-respect. And Aliona will understand. Vaz, eat something, or you'll mm. make yourself sick. Is that so? Well, somehow he doesn't really look very humiliated and offended. He seems quite happy to me. I see. Anyway, it's a wedding. Shall we have a drink? And you, Vasily, should stop drinking. I'm fine. Oh, excuse me, Colonel. I didn't That's mean. great. Well, that's the story I of how I got nice on the police force. Yeah. Tatiana, why are you leaving so early? Someone is waiting for me. Ah, a California cowboy came for you to take you to the dark, tear us off prairies, right? That's silly and not funny. Hello. She once thought that he was a murderer. And now you see, they sit in the same car. Hmm. Mm. <sighs> well, now I understand what makes one a feminist. Yes, Watson. I just don't understand why someone can't just come over here and offer to put a nail in the wall for me or fix a vacuum. <sighs> yes, hello. Are you Private Eye Tatiana Ivanova? I am. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, could you please come over here to my place? I can't be away from home for any length of time. I'll explain when I see you. Well, all right. Then I'll text you the address right now, okay? Goodbye, then. Hey, all right, yeah. Okay, gather here. Okay, gather around. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Okay, wave at the camera. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Right, right, right. What a beautiful okay. thing. Andrew, I have a body. It's my client, a young woman. At her place. Write down the address. Vorotnikov Lane, 659, entrance B. Mm-hmm. And hurry up, I'm alone. I think death occurred two or three hours ago from numerous blows with a blunt and heavy object. The murder weapon wasn't in the apartment. 
There are several bruises on the hand and face. There's something under her nails. We'll send that to forensics. Aaron, give me the glove. See you here. Presto. Bravo, Jerome. <laughs> it's my pleasure. Mm -hmm. Any luck there? Nothing. No one has seen or heard anything. The whole place is crazy with the wedding. They wouldn't notice the end of the world. Julius Stevenson, born August the 20th, 1992. She lives, or rather lived, Motornaya 163. Remember? I've never met the girl before, and I've never seen her either. And where did she get your phone number? I don't know, and I've already told you everything. What did she want to talk to you about? Any ideas? That's what I'd like to know. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Drink up, drink up, drink up, drink, drink, drink. Hey, guys, wait a second. They'll buy out Marina and you'll go, okay? Hey, Jaden, come here, come here. Officers, will you drink with us a little bit to the happiness of the couple, please? No, we're on duty. Oh, come on, come on. Hurry, come on, come on, come on. Do you realize that a woman was killed on the next floor? So what? That's not our problem. Let's go to the registry office. Let's go. Let's go. See you. It's so long. Yeah, come on, guys, let's go. Yeah. yeah, bye everyone. Right, bye. bye. Yeah, really yeah. fun. Divorce. I see. Okay, see you tomorrow at 11. I need your testimony. You're the main witness now. Hmm. It's what I live for. All right, I'm going. Bye, Tatiana. The autopsy revealed Miss Stevenson was actually three months pregnant. That's just creepy. Which further complicates the situation. Mm, yes. Mm-hmm. It's all right. It's nice to deal with a professional. Then bring me in on this one, since I'm so helpful. And why do you need this? Well, if no other reason than to find out what Stevenson wanted from me and how she got my number. We'll find out and tell you. That's the way it works. Listen, do you remember who helped you with the fortune teller murder? Mm, I'd love to take you in, I swear. Orders. To not use any outside help. You're a bad liar, aren't you? Well, you know me. I'll get the truth out of you anyhow. <sighs> Melnikov asked us. Andrew? Only shh. That's great. Come on in. Good morning. Am I interrupting? I just wrote my statement for Jerome. I asked him to bring me in on the investigation, but he refused. Could you take care of that for me, Andrew? For old times' sake, hmm? There's no way. My superiors have been twisting Jerome's arm lately. Hmm. Yes, I'm listening. What? I can't hear you. Speak louder. Ah, you found the owner of the apartment. Excellent. Where is he? That's even better. Wait there for me. I'll talk to him myself. Bye. Don't you want to say anything to me? <sighs> like what exactly? Well, at least... At least about the murder of Stevenson. It's none of your business. All right. 
Well, then tell me something else. Why are you treating me like this? Why don't you talk to me? Why are you being rude to me? What's wrong? Did I do something to offend you? No. I don't understand. Well, if you don't want to have any more contact with me, then say so. All right, then I'll say it. We really shouldn't talk. You're absolutely right about that. Really? Hmm. I've rented for so many years. Not a single scandal. Then suddenly, bam, a corpse. Look at this. Uh, Are you sure you don't know her? I've never seen her. I've never seen her in my life, officer. I swear it. I swear it. Come on, Milton. Who did you rent this apartment to? I guess it's impossible to see the contract. <laughs> well, you can't... <laughs> you can't live on a pension. You'll end up kicking the bucket. Well, of course, if you get drunk every day. Come on, give me the name, the surname, phone number. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Milton. <laughs> the, the man <laughs> answered my... Advertisement a week ago, I think. Well, he, he came in, we sat, we talked some, we had a drink. Well, I, I, I don't remember about the passport, but he's a decent man. I noticed that immediately. He's a decent man, yes. you say? How'd you know that he was decent? Oh, he gave me all of the money in advance. I remember. My God, I remember. <gasps> this guy's just like, like fingerless Vasily. He's missing a finger. What finger? On which hand? Uh, uh, Vasily was missing uh, on the left hand. And this guy on the right hand. Oh, it's like half of a finger has been completely erased. You sure? I'm sure. Sure I am. I'm sure. Here. You don't remember. You know, it hasn't been And how are you feeling? All. Yeah. It's been a very smooth. Oh. Okay, that's good to hear. That's good to hear. Everything okay in there? No. Did you find really. out anything? Uh, Did apparently. You anything? Well, no, the yeah. growth is. Um, <laughs> well, they didn't get specific mm -hmm. about it, but it's well, okay. not. I spoke with Helena Baranova. She's Stevenson's friend. Do you remember her? No. Well, it was she who brought Julia to you. She told me a little about your clinic. And I'd like to hear it directly from the horse's mouth. Ask away. You specialize in surrogate motherhood, am I correct about that? Absolutely. Trendy business. Ah, right, you're alluding to our celebrities. <laughs> well, look at us. Our clinic is seven years old, so we're setting the trends, not following them. But speaking seriously, our clients are usually married couples, including foreign ones, who can't have children. We select suitable surrogate mothers for them who, for a fee, agree to bear a child for that couple. We always complete a contract. When the child is born, surrogate mother signs the child over to our clients, and in fact, this is the end of their commitment to us. Yes, and we've never had any problems with the police. <sighs> if anyone finds out, I'm screwed. Don't worry, no one will. So yesterday I went to the address on Stevenson's ID. It's a room in a creepy slum. Mm -hmm. Her neighbor said that Julia had left the country to work as a nurse about two months ago. She went abroad where? She lied about it. We checked it. Stevenson never even had a foreign passport. Mm -hmm. But that's not all. Julia's an orphan. She lived in an orphanage. Mm -hmm. Hence, no relatives. And what can you say about Miss Stevenson? Hmm? A very lovely person. It was the first time we worked with her. And her health and physical data were just, uh, just perfect for surrogacy. Yes. Well, that's why we found the clients in no time. A married couple from Moscow. I'd like you to meet Julia. And allow me to introduce Karina and Courtney Gardner. Hello. Hey. Hello. Julia, we chose you from all the photographs. Mm -hmm. You know, you look much better in person. Sorry. You agree, Corny? Yes, Julia, you are very pretty. Thank you. 
She even reminds me a little of me in my youth. <laughs> yes. There is something. <laughs> well, so come on, let's have a seat. Yeah. <sighs> you know, I... I realized that we can actually do this, really. <laughs> we will definitely do this. <laughs> Tell me, your surrogate mothers live here before delivery, right? Mm, not necessarily. Well, but they usually do, yes. Nobody really wants to walk with a belly in front of the neighbors. Did Julia live here? Yes, I can show you the room she stayed in if you like. Do you know who the child's father is? Not yet. Uh, the chief was at the orphanage today, got an address for Stevenson's friend, but I won't get the news until tomorrow. Well, thank you, Vasily. I'll call you. You'd better reconcile with... with Andrew. He's a really good man. I didn't break up with him. He should apologize for today's conversation. Um, what conversation is that? Let him tell you about that. Ooh. In general, for all of us, her escape was a real shock. No one thought she would do that. Why do you think that she escaped? Well, so... This is the usual... so-called surrogate fraud. There were no other reasons for Julia to run away. I'm not following you. Why'd she run? What's the end game? Well, it's very simple. We carefully select our surrogate mothers. For us, this is our... reputation. But... there aren't that many... Women who want to do this, not just who want to, but who meet the medical criteria. But the demand is significant, and as you said yourself, that surrogate children are almost a trend. Well, a decent woman agrees to become a surrogate mother. After confirmation of pregnancy, she gets uh, a big advance and escapes. And what's the point of that? She has an abortion, and in a few months, she surfaces again somewhere, usually in the Far East, in the same type of clinic as ours. And everything begins again. You have such an interesting lighter. Can I have a look? Yes, of course. It's quite beautiful. Yeah, I collect them. Really? <laughs> yes, for five years already. When I was in school, I used to collect old coins, but I just lost interest in it. Turns out, I'm not a collector at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and this one is my favorite. Of course, she let us all down. The gardeners will be very upset, and still, I feel sorry for her. Do you suspect anyone? For goodness sakes, whom? Mm. Could you come and see me tomorrow? Well, to record your statement for us. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Well, if I have to, of course. Will 12 o'clock be okay? That'd be great. Here's my card with all the contact mm -hmm. info. And one last question. Do you know Detective Tatiana Ivanova, by chance? No. Or maybe Julia mentioned her? Think back. No, no, no. Julia never mentioned that name or anyone else. No. All right. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Mm -hmm. you do everything? Yes, the papers are in order now. Everything else is destroyed. Thank you, Lacey. The last thing I need is to go to jail because of that fool. Is this your lighter? Yes, 
Yes, it is. Where did you get it? We found it in the Stevenson girl's apartment. Could you explain how it got there? I have no idea. When was the last time you saw Stevenson? About a... a week ago, I guess. And where were you on Friday? From 12 noon to 2 in the afternoon? At home. Are there any witnesses who can confirm that? No, no, I was alone. I caught a little cold and decided that I would not go to the clinic and stayed at home. Mm. You don't think that I killed Julia, do you? We don't think so. We suspect. But so far, things aren't looking too good for you, Belkin. This is a court order for your detention. You should read it. How long have you known Vadim? Well, I've been working as a head physician here for six years, uh, and the clinic is actually our mutual brainchild. And who will be the director now, you? Well, yes, until Vadim returns. Someone has to do it after all. This business is big and complex. I was told that Vadim had been upset recently. Didn't seem like himself, is that true? Yes, you know, things really weren't perfect of late some expenses, and always the competitors. Vadim, of course, was angry and very nervous. He mm. would get wound up for nothing. And at such moments, he didn't control himself. I found it. Someone hid it in the furthest box. What is it? Julia Stevenson's file. You could say that it's a private matter. Mm -hmm. Well, should I continue searching? Yeah, go ahead. Excuse me, please. What are you interested in? I may be able to help you find it. Do you know that the law says that a surrogate mother must have at least one child of her own? Of course. Sure, I do. Then how could you take Julia? She didn't have children. <laughs> how is that possible? Here you are. Here's the birth certificate. Mm. And here is a copy of Stevenson's daughter's birth certificate. Yeah, but they're both fakes. What do you mean? They were made by... Helena Baranova. She's a friend of Stevenson's. She was a surrogate mother for you, too, and had no children. Well, you need to understand, unfortunately, we don't have the capacity to check all the candidates. And we are not obliged to do so. You know, we don't force anyone to come here. Please, here you can see all the contracts. We, we have wonderful conditions, and all surrogate mothers are very happy. Well, we'll see. And we will figure all of this out. Yes, please do that. Mm -hmm. I decided to do a complete reboot, a full one. Nikita, would you mind saying that in human language without your computer terms? Oh, please. I realized that I was behaving like an infantile egotist. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what prison can do to people. <laughs> and I also realized that it's time to start acting older, more mature. Stop thinking only about myself and start making a family. Oh, you know I think something's wrong with Watson. He sleeps all the time. Look at how fat he is. Well, come on, let's uh, call the vet then. You think that he's sick? You know, he's gotten very fat recently. Do you think that I might be overfeeding him, Doctor? Or it may be a tumor. Well, we're gonna see, right? Well, listen, you shouldn't wear yourself ahead of time. Mm. Oh, all right. <clears throat> so tell me, before Watson, did you have cats? No. I see. The fact is that your Watson isn't a male. He's a she. And she's gonna have kittens very soon. And that actually <laughs> is the whole story. <laughs> well, such <laughs> confusions happen quite often, especially with uh, street animals and inexperienced owners. Your kitty is absolutely healthy, and I think she'll deliver successfully. 
<laughs> Wait a second. How and when? Well, <laughs> you'd know better than me. Oh, of course. He ran away. Uh, first of all, she... When did that happen? Uh... Well, about a month ago or a little more. Well, look. After two more weeks or maybe three, <laughs> here are some vitamins. Give her these. They're good. <laughs> Delicious. <sighs> what else should I do? Well, I'd say you should look on the internet. There are a lot of cat sites. Everything is described in detail. You could even find video. <laughs> I think you'll be fine. You will make it. So if you don't mind, I think I'll go. Oh, I'll show you out. <sighs> mm. During the search, we see Stevenson and Gardner's contracts with the clinic. Melnikov and Jerome were most interested in the following items. If a surrogate mother fails to fulfill her obligations, the clinic returns to the client the entire amount of this contract and a moral compensation at a rate of 200%. Yes, that's right. And in case of force majeure, well, the murder of a surrogate mother is a force majeure. The clinic doesn't owe Gardner anything. Yes, that's right, it's a model contract. But for Jerome, this is a motive for murder. Just the evidence that they lack to file the final charge. It's cause to keep you here until the trial. It's ridiculous nonsense. It's just a coincidence. I didn't kill anyone. As a lawyer, I believe you. But Jerome is already preparing to bring your case to trial without delay, which would mean an indictment and possibly 10 years of imprisonment. And that is only if you agree to write a confession. But I didn't kill anyone. I have an idea. Stevenson's body was found by Tatiana Ivanova, a private detective. I don't know her, but my colleagues say that she's the best specialist in the city. Let's hire Ivanova. Let her try to figure it all out. Under the pretext that we are dissatisfied with the official investigation. Besides, she's in the know. Yes, okay, I agree. Call her up. My considerable legal experience suggests that Belkin didn't kill her. And the facts? Well, that's just the point. With such facts, he should make a confession, but he keeps on insisting that he didn't kill. In a word, you were his last hope. Well, and mine, too. You were, one might say, there from the beginning. The fee is at your discretion. <sighs> well, then I will take your case. Of course, we have very little time. When can I meet with Mr. Belkin? I'll try to make arrangements for that as soon as possible. Now tell me, how well do you know Jerome and Melnikov? A little. I expect that you have a good relationship. It's wonderful, actually. Hello, Voss. Remember you told me that Melnikov was going to meet with Stevenson's friend? Yes, why? Give me your phone number. Belkin hired me to investigate the case. I'll send it now. By the way, I asked Chief about your conversation. He said he had nothing to apologize for. Oh, yeah? Well, that's perfect. No, it's not perfect. I can see that he's worried. Okay, I'll meet with him and we'll talk about it soon. Thanks for the number. Bye bye Peacemaker. It's so terrible. I just can't believe it happened. It's awful. Yes, you're right. Is this your baby? Yes. Absolutely, totally mine. I didn't want children before. And what happened? Well, since I was a surrogate mother, I developed a maternal instinct. Wanted to have a baby of my own. Do you have any idea who did this? No. After a conversation with a colleague, a few questions have been raised. Ask me. I'm for whatever will put this freak in jail. Tell me, did you advise Julia to become a surrogate mother? No. No. It was her own idea. I had nothing to do with it. Okay, mm. then. What do you want to know?
Andrew, come and see me. Yes, right now, I have a surprise for you. You really should stay out of this. Thank you for your advice. Yes? Well, where's the surprise? Here, Belkin hired Tatiana to investigate the Stevenson murder. Since he doesn't trust the official investigation, that is, you and me. Good afternoon, Andrew. It was a good one. So, what brings you by, if I may ask? Let me explain. Where did Julia work? She worked as a waitress in some dump. Where else could she work after the orphanage? No education, no connections. She couldn't have afforded an ordinary wedding, much less a dream wedding. So Julia decided to become a surrogate mother to pay for a wedding? Mm, it's been her dream from childhood. They used to call her bride in the orphanage. She exhausted us. She said that she would have the best wedding in the world, a fairy tale wedding. I thought she forgot about it, but apparently she didn't. She even had a groom, Oscar. <laughs> and did she tell you about him? A sissy, a patsy, and I guess a nerd. A real zero financially lives with his mother. Mm -hmm. So Julia had to finance her dream wedding all by herself. Would you know if Oscar knew how Julia was going to make money for the wedding? No. She made up some story and he believed it. Do you really think that Stevenson decided to give birth to someone's baby to pay for a wedding? You can't be serious. That's nonsense. You don't know women, Andrew. This wedding was her life stream. Why didn't she sell a kidney then? And I know women better than you think. Stop, guys. No fighting. I understand that absolutely everything points to Belkin, but I have too many questions. I don't understand why Julia, who wanted to become a surrogate mother for money, suddenly disappeared and decided to run away. Don't you find that a little illogical? Why did she rush to call me? What did she want to talk about? I don't understand that. Listen, your questions are, of course, interesting, but they don't alter the fact that Vadim is guilty. Besides, the investigation isn't over. Well, we have a lead. Something unique about the man who rented Milton's apartment. And what's so unique? He's missing half of the index finger on his right hand. Are you looking for him already? Are there any clues? Not yet. Milton doesn't remember anything but the fingers. He was drunk. Hmm. And Julia's fiance, Oscar, you found him? Yes, Agayev talked with him, but nothing interesting. The guy is still in shock. Hmm. I'd really like to have a conversation with him. Mm hmm Do you mind, Andrew? Please, go ahead. That would be a great help, right, Andrew? That depends. Hmm. Copy the number. I was hired by Vadim Belkin. The investigation points to him in the murder of Julia Stevenson. He claims that he didn't kill Julia. And who is this Belkin? Director of the Family Happiness Clinic. I'm sure you've heard news stories about surrogate motherhood. Of course. It's just as disgusting as prostitution. Surely the killer is from the same bordello. Oscar, tell me, when was the last time that you saw Julia? Mm. Well, about two months ago. I accompanied her to the airport, as she said, to work in Germany. <sighs> to Germany. Such a little liar. And you the patsy. How could you trust a girl from an orphanage? It's in their genes. How to lie and how to steal from people. Worse than gypsies. She wrote me letters and sent... Photos of herself. 
They told you, fool. The police. It's photoshopped. Do you have any idea why Julia decided to become a surrogate mother? I don't know. I couldn't even think about that. On the brink of tears again. Well, hush, honey. Go calm down. Go on, go on. That poor little boy. Yesterday he told me, you know, Mom, I can't look at the girls anymore. I feel for you. Then would you please leave us alone? Then he may be able to forget it. Yes, I think I have to go. Excuse me, miss. Are you Tatiana Ivanova? Yes, that's me. I'm sorry, and you are? Uh, we are our parents of Vadim, Belkin. The lawyer told us about you, and so we decided that... To talk to you about Vadim. Sorry to turn up unannounced like this. Hmm. Maybe we came at a bad time? Uh, no, 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 it's okay. Come in, won't you, please? Ah, oh, thank, thank you. Thank you. And take off your coats. Yes. Mm. Yes. He is not guilty. I'm absolutely sure. My son is a doctor, not a murderer. Save our son, will you? We have no one else who can. Here, I... I brought our family album. I want you to look and understand for yourself that such a person can't be a murderer. Look at these, please. Look. Here are photographs of our Vadim. Vadim opened his clinic not for the money. He wanted to help people. Do you know how many families he has helped to make happy? Excuse me, please. What is this photograph of? Oh, this is Vadim's birthday. We celebrated it at the countryside. Yes, two or three years ago. And who is this person right here? That is, uh, oh, well, that's uh, mm -hmm. Lacey's relative. Yes. He's chief physician of the clinic. Yes, she and Vadim had a romance. Yes, they almost went to the registry office, but then they broke up. I asked Vadim, but he did not give the reason to me. He is uh, secretive about his personal life. Was Lacey at that birthday party? Yes. Of course. She took this picture. That's why she's not in it. And this guy is her uncle or her brother. I don't remember exactly. But he drove Lacey out to the countryside in his car. Yes, and he helped us to fix the summer house. Even without a finger. He's pretty handy. <laughs> Would you mind giving me this photograph for of a course. while? Of course. Of course. And... Will this... be a help to Vadim? I don't know. Let's not make any predictions. That can bring bad luck. Yes. 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 <clears throat> he is the one. Fingerless. Hm. You sure about that? Yes. <laughs> it's just like I said to the comrade captain on the right hand. <laughs> you can't drink your memory away. <laughs> Have you already got him? Not quite yet. And you know, I haven't drunk since that day. Comrade, comrade captain must have hypnotized mm. me. I just can't drink. Mm. You, you be sure and tell the comrade captain that I have decided to advertise the apartment in the newspaper. Mm. I want everything to be proper mm. by the book, in proper order. I... I I don't need troubles in my advancing age. This is the right decision. Excuse me. Can I take this newspaper with me? Please, take it with you. For God's sake. <laughs> uh -huh. I urgently need to meet Vadim. No, I won't tell you on the phone. I'll tell you when we meet. Ask Jerome, on my behalf and yours, 
You're a lawyer. Yes, it'll be good to meet today. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is Dima, Lacey's second cousin. How do you think Julia could have known him? Well, in principle, yes. He had worked as a mechanic at our clinic for about six months, and then he quit, but that's after Julia showed up. Strange, I never would have thought that Julia and Dima are such different people. You know, very often that's what attracts people. Uh, what else can you tell me about Dima? Not much, I rarely talk to him. Well, he's morose, brooding, a real loner. Has Lacey told you anything about him? Uh, I think Lacey was a little embarrassed of him. Uh, I think he was tried as a juvenile. Hmm. Could he be a killer? I don't know. Why would he kill Julia? Well, maybe he helped her escape, rented an apartment for her, then robbed and killed her, or maybe they fought. Yes, you're right, there are many questions. Like, why did Julia run away? Without money and with problems, what's the reason? Maybe this whole thing is about Julia. By the way, why did you break up with Lacey? Did my parents tell you that? <laughs> well, I'm the one to blame. One fine day I realized that Lacey was not that person. Well, she wasn't my soulmate. And that means you left her. Yes, yes. Jerk, jackass, I know. Mm -hmm. And after all this, the two of you continue to work together and to communicate? Well, that was Lacey's decision. After all, she's a wonderful doctor, administrator, and the fact that she stayed at the clinic is just a piece of luck. She made it work. Then we continued as just really good friends. Well then, Vadim, in that case, I congratulate you. You were really lucky with Lacey. Hey, Jerome, Ivanova's leaving. Okay, I'll put her on. Yes, hello? This is Jerome. Hey there. Have you finished with Belkin? Yes. Do me a favor. As a friend, come to my place. It's close by. We need to talk. All right. Have a nice day. Thank you. Yes. Hello, Jerome. Hello. Please have a seat. So, tell me how you're doing with Belkin. Okay. Oh, brevity is the soul of wit. And we thought you would tell us something interesting. Notice, I satisfied your request for a meeting with Belkin right away. Thank you, Jerome, but I really have nothing to tell you. Although... That's one less secret we have now. Look what I found at Milton's place. You think this is Julia's handwriting? If you doubt it, you can send it for analysis. What were you doing at Milton's? The same as you trying to find out who we rented the apartment to. Mm-hmm. And how are you two doing? Well, we found out that one of Julia's last calls was at the railway station. Dispatch also remembered that a woman named Stevenson called and wanted to switch her ticket to Moscow for an earlier date. Said she was pregnant and not feeling well. It was the day before the murder. Yes. Dispatch even wanted to help her, but she couldn't, since there weren't any tickets for Stevenson in the system for any Moscow trains. What do you think about that? I think that Julia wanted to go to Moscow and thought that she had a ticket. Brilliant, Watson. And we're thinking that Julia decided she would get more from the gardeners than she would from Vadim, since the lion's share of the surrogate mother fee goes to the clinic. She ran away, decided to go to Moscow, but Vadim found her, but it's still not clear how. Probably Fingerless gave her up. Well, then Vadim came to Julia. He asked her to stay and even threatened her. And when he realized that everything was useless, he killed her to avoid paying the penalty. 
Hmm? The clinic had serious financial problems. We checked it out. What do you think? That sounds pretty plausible, but... Then I don't understand why Belkin has hired me. So I would establish his guilt? In his situation, it's much more profitable to confess all at once to claim extenuating circumstances. We thought about that and then remembered the amnesty. The later the trial takes place, the easier it is to be covered by it. Do you understand? So he's just using you, Tatiana. Hmm, well, thanks for the information. I'll give it some thought. I don't even know how Dima and Julia could have actually been connected. Everything's possible. So, you haven't seen him since he quit? No. Why did he quit? He told me that he kind of found a better job and... You know, Dima was in jail for robbery in his youth. Yes, he... left the prison. His life's a complete mess. And in our family, he's perhaps a kind of terrible infant, and we all must help him to become a man. So he doesn't have his own family? No. He was married once. Mm. But that was long ago, and he has no children. And where does he live? I don't know. He lost his apartment after prison. Well, he m must be renting. <sighs> I'm sorry, but don't get me wrong. I don't really care about his life. Mm. I see. And does he at least have a phone? Oh, yes. I'll give you the number. But the fact is, I called him a few days ago. The phone was turned off. And so... Thanks a lot. Yes, and if Dima happens to show up, let me know right away, please. In the end, it's in his best interest. Sure, of course I will. Hello, little sister. I'm sorry I'm late. One should hurry to the afterlife with you. <laughs> You're early. What happened? Why did you call? I called because they tracked you down. You better get out of town as quickly as you can. Well, until things settle down. Interesting. And who's that filth who tracked me down? That filth is a private detective. And she's a woman. Where are you, Dima, man without a finger? I wish you'd have your kittens. I've got enough to think about. Yes, hello? Oh, it's you, Svetka. No, why? I'm okay. I just thought it was a call from work. Today I can't. Today is my mother's birthday. I'm going to church. Mm-hmm. Yes, all right. I'll call you later then. See you. The General set a new record today, solo for an hour and a half. Uh. Chief, I got two messages from Tatiana. Three for me. And she texted, I've found the killer, call me. you're trying to reach is switched off or is outside of the coverage area. The last call was at 10.45. On it. I'm calling Sveta now. <laughs> Hello, Sveta. Hi. Uh, listen, have you seen Tatiana today or talked to her? About what time? 
To what church? No, nothing happened. I just can't get through to her. Yeah, I'll call you back when we find her. Mm -hmm. So? Today is her mother's birthday, and she was at church. Did you get the address? I did. Let's go. I got it. Continue the search. So then, any news? We have. So? We sent photos to every department. To all cars, to traffic, and Emercom. Hospitals, airport, train stations, too. What about the church? We talked to every employee that was there around that time. Nobody remembers. The worst thing is if Tatiana starts acting on her own. I know her character. Yeah, she really is an... Ivanova. Please take one. We really need your help. Take this. Thank you. Stop chattering. What is this flyer you're handing out about? Take it. We need help. Take one, please. You may have seen this girl. Take one. Thank you so much. Maybe it doesn't matter that she was able to track down this fingerless person. But I decided to come to you. Well, just in case, you hear me? In, in order to inform you. And rightly so, Milton. Voss, come and sit down. Get a description and a sketch of this fingerless. Then send it to everyone. I'm going to Volkov. Yes, sir. Well done, Milton. Uh, well done. Uh, yeah. Uh, and now the weather. It's cloudy in Tiraslav today. Possible snow later in the afternoon. The temperature during the day will be 23 in the region, down to 18. Attention, we have information from Tarasov's CDIA. They've been broadcasting it all day. A man is wanted on suspicion of murder. Description, missing half of the index finger on his right hand. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of this person, please call 4410702. It's the second day already, and not a single clue. We have to search. A person is not a needle in a haystack. Tatiana showed Milton a photograph of Fingerless. Where did she get it? And so it's necessary to question everyone she met recently. Agayev's doing that. Comrade Colonel, we have a detainee. He tried to run away, the scoundrel. Listen to me. Her name is Tatiana. Where is she? Is she alive? I don't know any Tatiana. I've never seen her. Stop your lying! I'm asking you, where is she? If anything happens to her, I'll strangle you with my own hands! Andrew, Get it! cut it out. Sit. Why did you go to the station? I wanted to visit my relatives. Do you know this woman? No. Come in. Hello. Hello. This him? Him. Definitely him. Gotcha, you bastard. Thank you. Wait in the corridor, please. Uh-huh. What connected you and Stevenson? Did you rent an apartment for her? Did you kill her? I didn't kill her. He's lying, sir. Listen to me carefully. Your crimes include murder plus kidnapping. You face a minimum of 20 years, and it could turn into life imprisonment. If you don't voluntarily, give me a confession. All right. Leave me alone about your Tatiana. I don't know any Tatiana. 
In fact, my sister, Lacey, is responsible for this one. She told me that if I, uh, killed Julia, she would pay me a lot of money. Well, why do you need this, huh? What did Vadim do to you? Tell me or I'm not doing it. All right. Just briefly, no comments. In fact, Vadim dumped me, and it was mean. In public. <sighs> I want to take revenge on him. And also take the clinic. I get it. Love and money. By the way, I didn't like Vadim right away. Fancy pants. But I didn't kill her. When I got there, she was already dead. As to who killed her and why, I don't know. Uh, hello, Lacey. Uh, listen, someone got ahead of us. Someone hit Julia in the head. Thank God. Uh-huh. Took her out before we could. What should I do now? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. And when I met Lacey yesterday, she said that a detective Vadim was hired and looking for me, and I needed to get out of the city for a while until it settled down. So I... Went to the train station. Hello, Mrs. Lacey. I have a warrant for your arrest. Change your clothes. For what? You are suspected of arranging the murder of Julia Stevenson. Your brother is already making a statement. Well, in general, I told Julia that when she delivered, Vadim would screw her. That he wouldn't pay her and that he had done this before. Well, then I suggested that she run away and become my client. I said that I was moving to Moscow the other day to open my own clinic. And naturally, I promised to pay her more than Vadim. And why did Julia call a private detective? Had she started to suspect something? Yes, it's all because of the tickets. My brother and I told her that we bought her a ticket to Moscow. Well, and on the day of departure, this fool became ill and she called the station to switch the tickets. Well, it turned out that there were no tickets for Stevenson. Well, of course, she decided to call me. I tried to calm her down. I thought I reassured her, but apparently not long enough. Stevenson saw Tatiana's ad in the newspaper and decided to call her for a consultation but they didn't get to meet. What will I get? The court will determine that. I think that organization of a murder is six years. And what will Vadim get? Vadim will go free. You yourself helped to fix all the papers, so there are no charges against Belkin. <laughs> Bastard. He always gets his way. May I come in? No, it's not her. I told you, keep looking. I don't care that it's dark. Get some flashlights. Call me anytime. I'm at work. Do you have any news? Looking. What do you mean, looking? It's been two days. 37 hours. She needs help, and you're drinking tea? Come on, do something! Where's your terrorist off police, huh? Ordinary people have done more than you! You just calm down! Sorry. Uh, 
damn me. Greetings, Chief. Hello. What's that? Volkov brought photos from the wedding yesterday. Forgot to take them. What's wrong, Chief? I need to check. I've got to. To check what? Let's go. I'll explain on the way. Here it is, guys. We had photographers and cameramen, the best guys around. <clears throat> Rewind? No. Voss, take a look at the time. It matches. Go further. Right now, stop. That's Oscar, Julia's fiance. Is he yours? No, no. I know my people. And he told me he last saw Julia at the airport. If only she was alive. Let's go. Untie me. Mom told me not to. <laughs> How are you going to live with Julia <laughs> without Mom's permission? I was doing all right. Tell me. Julia. Julia. Hello. Wait a second, you're in Germany. Let's go, I'll explain everything to you. Come on, let's go. <laughs> and you'll give your baby to someone for money? <laughs> Oscar, no, of course. You just don't know what surrogate motherhood's about. It's not my child, it's inside me, yes, but it's not my child. What are you saying? <laughs> well, that's true. If you want, we can go and talk to the doctor. She'll explain everything. Oscar, well, I'm doing this for us. You know, to make money for our wedding, hmm? Why couldn't you have just worked as a prostitute then? Mom said everything right. Oscar, no, don't go! Oh, just leave me alone. Well, then get out of here! Why did you come, huh, little mama's boy? What can you do without your mom, huh? You can't even earn money for a wedding, <laughs> you toddler. <clears throat> Hello, Mom. Mama, I killed her. Hey, Mom, I killed her. What should I do, Mom?
Who's there? Good afternoon. Captain Melnikov. I'm investigating the murder of Julia Stevenson. Here's my identification. Are you Oscar, sir? Yes. What do you want? Can I ask you a couple of questions? Please, come on in. Hello. Hello. Is your father fond of hunting? He lived for hunting, as my mom says. Mm -hmm. When I was three, he was killed by a bear in the taiga. I'm sorry. Will your mother be back soon? I don't know. Why do you ask? Oh, no. I just asked. And now about the case. I have a photograph from a wedding. Recognize him? Is Tatiana alive? Is she here? You'll take me to her right now. Quietly, calmly, no tricks. Agreed? No, we are not agreed. Hands up. Mom always shows up in time. Search him, Sonny. So you wanted to see Tatiana? You'll see her now. Get up slowly, hands behind your back. Now you follow Oscar. Mama! Quietly now. Give me the gun. Give it to me, that's right. Andrew! Andrew! How is he? We've done everything we can. It's a serious injury. The bullet entered near the heart. But your captain's a healthy man. He's putting up a good fight, so let's hope for the best outcome. Mm, that's okay. He's strong. He'll get through this. Watson, you were my sweet kitty. You didn't wait for me and did everything by herself. You gave birth to such beauties. Thank you, Shura, for taking them. Oh, thank God you're alive. <sighs> well, okay, I'll go to the kitchen and you should talk. You can't imagine what we went through while you were gone. I canceled my flight and rescheduled my vacation. When are you leaving? Uh, 
in a week. I would love to stay, but I really can't. My work... Too bad. If it's too bad, let's go together. <laughs> Yeah, as what? A secretary, but wife's better. <laughs> I'm serious, we should go. I promise you. A quiet, fun life. I'm going to help you forget about all this awful Russian horror. All these maniacs, all these sellers. All these roads. It's a very tempting offer, Nikita. But I have to turn you down. Uh, why is that? Well, probably because my whole life is here. My work and my friends. I can't live without it. Ah. Uh, well, if something changes, let me know. <clears throat> Nikita. Take the kitten, huh? <laughs> Name it Tatiana. <laughs> no. I'm allergic to them. Now you know how we search for you. How we solved the case of Belkin's clinic. How Andrew tracked down Oscar. Now, Tatiana, it's your turn to tell us how you figured out who the murderer was. A button with a monogram helped me. Hello, Oscar. I saw you and your mother at church. <sighs> uh, yeah, today is nine days since Julia's death. I saw a familiar button on Oscar's coat lapel. It's good that you came. That was nice of you. I had seen the exact same button right next to Julia's body. Hello. Hello, how are you? You find the killer? Not yet. But there are some interesting clues. Clues? Curious. Will you tell us? With pleasure. Only here it's kind of inconvenient. Wait, you have a place somewhere nearby, don't you? Yes, literally. Nearby. So let's go to your place, hmm? You're welcome. Quite welcome. Mm -hmm. Get in the car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sit up here, in front. Thank you. Of course, it was foolishness and adventurism that I went there. But at that moment, I knew I was right. I just needed to cut off the button for forensics. What do you want for your silence? Not a thing. And you know I understand you. I'm ready to help you. Let Oscar confess to everything that he did. It'll go better for him at the trial. You must be crazy. You want me to give up my only son to prison? Do you have children? <laughs> I see that. Julia's to blame for everything. She wound him up. He couldn't stand it. What are you going to do? I will defend my son just like any normal mother. Oscar! <laughs> Give me the button.
Throw back the carpet. Open the hatch. It's a pity you'll never know what maternal instinct is. Go on. At that moment, I mentally said my last goodbye to life. I expected that they'd kill me right away. But they didn't want to kill me there, they wanted to take me to the village. As I understand, they had a house there. We waited for the weekend. If you're saying that Belkin's a good man, then introduce me to him. <laughs> Svetka, that's so like you. He's depressed, he closed the clinic, and you still... And so I'll cure him. I want personal happiness too, well, you know. Well, okay, I'll introduce you to him. What's going on, huh? We've been here for three hours and nothing. Yes. Time to remember my acting classes. <laughs> hey, look over here! Who wants mm. a pretty kitten? Pretty, fluffy, tricolor cat here! Hey, young man, a cat in the house brings happiness. Take a cat. You won't be sorry that you did. Take it. I'm Sergeant Yegorov. Can I see your documents, ladies? <clears throat> Sit here, baby. I forgot them in another jacket. Too bad. Your documents have I to be forgot. with you. Are you selling animals? Do you have permission? The correct permits? You can't give them away here. Do you know that? No. Officers, could you try to understand us? We're in a real tough situation. Oh, we have six kittens here. Nobody wants yeah. to take them. We had to come to the street. Yes, I understand. But the law is the law. You'll have to pay a fine. And what if we pay the fine to you with kittens? How much would we owe yes. you? You think it's funny. You take your box and go straight to the police station. <sighs> I was delayed with all the procedures. Well, how's everything going? Sold anything? Mm -mm. What's up, Sergeant? They're taking us to the police station, Andrew. These girls are with me. Is that clear? <laughs> Apologies, Comrade Major. Any other questions? No, sir. No. Dismissed. Oh, you girls. Uh, I can't leave you alone for even a second. Why did he call you Major? You're a captain. Well, He's a Major. Congratulations. <laughs> and when will we celebrate, hmm, Comrade Major? Well, let's do it at the wedding. Andrew, did you buy the rings? <laughs>